Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and & Sip and this is Paint and & Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting early morning fishing and I'm going to be sipping on some Pinot Grigio and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for the materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, green oxide, Mars black, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, fluorescent orange, and chrome yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors too if you like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number eight round synthetic brush, and a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up too. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas. I'll even throw in the paper towel for you. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we are painting our sky. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using blue, white, orange, and yellow. And I'm gonna be bringing my sky about halfway down my canvas. So what I'm gonna do first off is I'm gonna put a little bit of blue and white on my brush at the same time and kind of eyeball where that halfway point is. So I'm gonna say it's right about here. And then you can use your brush if you want to, or if you, you know, just kind of eyeball that halfway point, I can see that this is maybe about an inch and a half above here. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I like to give myself these markers because I know when I'm painting, I just, my brush just gets away from me and I don't pay attention to where I'm, where I really want to stop. <laughs> so for me, if I put these visual markers in place, I will have a visual stopping point for my sky. So I'm going to have my sky darker at the top and on the left, and I'm going to have it going towards it being lighter over on the right hand side because that's where my sun is going to rise from. So I'm going to start with blue and a little bit of white on my brush because I want this upper left hand corner to be the darkest. And I'm just using a left to right kind of crisscross motion as my painting stroke. And then I'm going to, next time I pick up paint, I'm going to pick up just white. I didn't wash my brush. So what's going to happen is this blue will naturally just kind of work its way off of my brush and create a natural kind of gradient within that sky. So this way, as I'm going into my sunrise colors, which are going to be my um, oranges and yellows, I don't run the risk of a very green sky. <laughs> because if I have a lot of blue on my brush and pick up a bunch of yellow on my brush, I might end up with a big green sky. So I'm working some of this blue off of there. A little bit intermingled is going to be fine, but if you have a whole bunch of green on there, you might it might look a little bit um, not the way that you had anticipated. So now that I've got that going, I'm going to start to pick up my orange first as my sunset color because blue and orange is a lot safer than blue and yellow. So this is going to give you kind of a safe color to start your sunrise with or the, the glowy colors at the bottom of your sunrise. And I'm just going to kind of go towards that right hand side. Now I'm picking up white, yellow, and orange. 
and I'm going to get it to transition into a beautiful bright morning glow over on that right hand side and you can keep kind of tweaking these colors adding a bit more here and there and I am going up into the um, the area that I painted before you want to make sure that you kind of overlap that area that's going to um, if you don't overlap it it might end up looking like you just have distinct sections of color so you want to make sure that they overlap and they kind of talk to one another so I'm going into a little bit more of my yellow and white right now I know that my sun rising is going to be over here behind these beautiful trees that we're going to put in so I'm just kind of making sure that I've got a nice beautiful glow over in through here and you can certainly tweak your colors as much as you want to. You can have yours as light or as dark as you want. You can have your, your colors very vibrant or they can be soft like pastel -y kind of colors. So wherever your visual preference is, feel free to incorporate that into this painting. And I'm just kind of making sure, again, this top area kind of talks to the bottom area. So it almost looks like there's these light you know morning haze or morning you know glow coming off of the off of the lake kind of atmosphere and then once you've got this all done we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step i just want a couple more of these pink kind of hues just get floating across the sky here and i think that does it for me so i'm going to wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our water. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using the same colors that I used in my sky plus black. So I'm using black, blue, orange, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start at the bottom, I'm gonna work my way towards the top, I'm gonna leave myself maybe about a half of an inch or just a little sliver of unpainted canvas between my water and my sky just so I can continue to have a separation point, um, a visual separation point. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to make my water darker at the bottom. So it's going to be in essence kind of the same color formation or pattern that I have in the sky, only down at the bottom I'm going to have it a little bit darker. So that's why I'm going to start with black also. So I'm going to start with black and blue on my brush and I'm going to be using that same kind of left to right crisscross motion. That's the only time I'm going to pick up black because it will very easily take, take over. So the next time I pick up paint I'm picking up blue and white and then this is going to represent that top portion of the of the sky. Now we do have kind of, you know, just about equal amount of space, but because we're starting it darker, we're going to have, um, it's going to have to be kind of a quicker transition because we're adding, in essence, kind of an extra color down at the bottom. So as you go through this process, just know, you know, you don't want the blue to come up, you know, too far. Otherwise, it won't be necessarily a, an accurate representation of the sky. And now what I'm doing is I'm just going and I'm picking up again the blue and the white to get that, um, the transition from that darker area to the lighter area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop picking up both of those colors and I'm just going to be picking up white which is going to get it to transition into the lighter area like we did in the sky. So I'm really just doing the same thing that I did on the sky only I'm reversing it and I'm going from the bottom up. So now that I've got a lot of the blue off of my brush I'm going to start transitioning into those sunrise colors. So I'm going to start on this side with my orange. So if you had a lot of orange on this side, you're going to put a lot of orange on this side in the water. And if you had a lot of yellow on this side, you'll put a lot of yellow on that side in the water. So I just picked up a bunch of orange and this is going to be where I start with my transition into the um, sunrise colors. And it's the water and it can be ripply if you want it to so it doesn't have to necessarily be as smooth as that sky so just know that it can certainly have some movement in it we are definitely going to be putting some other stuff on top of it we've got reflections to come and a bow and a little um a little kind of marshy island thing so know that you've got plenty of things that will help to um 
get this to look a lot more like a, a, a nice representation of a early morning fishing trip body of water. Um, so if yours doesn't go perfect at this point, don't worry about it. We've got, like I said, plenty of time to, to get it to transition into something that's very representational of, of a beautiful morning fishing with a young person and a, a more mature person. So once we've got this step all nice and done, we will um, utilize this same brush for the next step. So you can kind of keep tweaking it. I'm just kind of looking for a similar color pattern up at the top, making sure I kind of get that to represent down in the water. Just kind of watching what I did up there and just kind of going below it. And then once I've got this all nice and done, I am going to wash and dry this brush. And of course, this is one of those step steps that would be great if you kind of stepped back away from your painting to see if you've got your color pattern in the way that you want. And then once you've done as much tweaking as you would like to, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting on our sun. So I'm gonna use, oh, I said I was gonna use my large brush, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna use my medium brush. So how I'm gonna do this, you can really put your rising sun wherever you'd like to. I'm gonna have mine over on the right side. Um, my tree line, my back tree line is only gonna be maybe a couple of inches above here. Um, so that's kind of where I'm gonna put my sun. You could have your sun higher in the sky. You could have it lower. You could have it to the left. You can really have it wherever you'd like to. But I'm gonna put mine somewhere in this vicinity where I feel like I have already kind of a light spot, but you can, again, tweak yours as much as you want. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, and orange. So the trick here is never, ever, 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 ever <laughs> have a lot of paint on your brush. Just a very little bit of paint. You'll be able to control that, um, the, the shifting of the colors. So I'm gonna go from white in the center, then I'm gonna do a little yellow glow on the outside of that, and then an orange glow on the outside of that. So it looks like it's just kind of emerging and, and glowing. And I won't have a lot of paint on my brush, so it kind of dries on the fly, and I can keep um, building on it. So I'm gonna do my, my center is gonna be maybe about two inches from the left, and maybe about two inches from the bottom of where my land is going to be, which is right about here. So I'm going to go somewhere in through here. I'm going to, again, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. And if you ever feel like you have too much paint, just dab it on your paper towel. And I'm just going to kind of get this, this in a nice circular way. And I'm not pressing hard, but I am giving my son some soft edges around um, the exterior so it kind of looks like it's glowing a little bit. And then I'm gonna dip my brush in a tiny bit of yellow paint. I know that the yellow can kind of take over and I'm really just looking to get it to glow around the edges of the of the sun so this yellow will will help me do that and I want my sun to look like it's glowing as opposed to just like a sticker or you know something that's really just a harsh outline on my canvas so I'm going to get this color to just kind of blend out into the sky and I just kind of keep rubbing those edges. I know the bottom of my sun is going to be hidden behind my um, my trees so I'm not concerned about that being uh, totally awesome on the bottom. Then I just picked up some of my orange and I'm going to do the same thing and if you feel that it's not soft enough or blending enough I just put a tiny bit of water on my brush because I want this to kind of just blend out into the sky. You could certainly use your bristle brush which will allow you to have a firmer kind of um, bristle and allow it to kind of push it out into that sky if you wanted to. Like these are little kind of clouds just floating by. You could also pick up a little bit more white on your brush. That will get it to, that will help you to get these colors to just kind of blend into the surrounding sky. And I'm just getting everything on here to make to, to have it look like these glowing colors are just transitioning right into the sky that sits next to them. So I just picked up a tiny bit of white with my um, orange color and I'm just kind of pulling these these beautiful vibrant colors from the from the glowing 
sun rising out into the neighboring colors. And if you feel that the center is not soft enough, or you can wash and dry your brush and just pick up a tiny bit more white and you can work those edges into that yellow a bit more. Or if you feel that the center isn't white enough, you can certainly just pick up that tiny bit of white paint and kind of keep getting it to blend into those neighboring colors. And then we are going to use our large brush for the next step. And we will put the sunbeams on later. That's gonna be a step that I do after we have our land on. So just know, know that the sunbeams will be coming, but once you've got um, your, your sun in, in a way that is pleasing to your eye, you can see I'm just adding a little bit more yellow on here. You can um, put this medium brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our distant land or the land that's on the other side of the body of water. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm in essence gonna start it really dark down at the bottom, which will be where it meets my water. So this is where we're gonna get rid of this vacant, unpainted canvas. And it's gonna be the darkest over on the left and it will get left and bottom and it's gonna get lighter and lighter as it goes towards that sun. Now, because the sun is in essence on the other side of this land, most of this land is in essence gonna be kind of in the shadows. So it's, it's meant to be dark. Um, so just know that when mine starts out dark and stays pretty dark most of the time, <laughs> I'm intending it to be that way. Um, I'm going to be using a lot of a type of a stippling type of brush stroke. I'll be dotting a lot, except for when I'm down at the bottom. When I'm down at the bottom where it's meeting this land, I'll be using a left to right brush stroke. So I have kind of a smooth um, entry into the water. We'll be putting on um, another layer of the water as well, so we'll be able to smooth out that um, the line where it meets the land, but to ensure that I'm in the right direction, I'm going to start by going left to right, and then I'm going to be just dotting my colors going up. At the top of the um, land is going to be the top of the trees, and I'm going to leave little peekaboo spots so I can see a lot of that sky behind it. You can have these as tall as you want. You can have any kind of trees you want. They can be pine trees. They can be maple trees. They can be imaginary trees. You, you can have fun with them as much as you want. So I'm starting with black and brown on my brush. And I'm going to be using a left to right kind of scooting motion just to kind of get this bottom area down towards the, um, towards the water. If you have some unpainted canvas still, don't worry about it. You'll be able to hit that when we, when we um, do the, the water. So I'm just kind of getting mine um, on the straighter side. I just picked up a little bit of green just because I know I'm going towards that um, sun area. And now that I've got that line on there, and again, it doesn't have to be perfectly firm. It doesn't have to be perfectly executed. We just want something there nice and dark at the bottom. Now I'm going to pick up a black uh, brown and green and I'm going to start my dotting type of brush stroke to get these tree tops and tree line to emerge. I'm going to have the, the highest area of my trees is going to go about halfway between the bottom of my land and the top of my canvas. So at some point I'm just going to kind of um, give myself that tree top for me that's going to be the tallest and then I'm just going to kind of work my way. I know that I want there to be um, different height trees throughout this. Right now I'm still just using black, brown, and green to get this started. I'm going to have it thicker and darker down at the bottom. I am going to have different height trees like I mentioned so you can really just have fun with 
getting these into whatever kind of formation that you would like that doesn't have to be anything specific. I'm just kind of doing this and whatever's coming out of my imagination right now. So you can certainly have fun with whatever um, way you would like your trees to be formed. So as I get towards this sun area, I'm using more green on my brush. I'm not washing my brush throughout this process. So that way all of these colors look like they're, they're talking to each other and blending with one another. As you can see, as I'm getting towards the sun, I am just, I'm, I'm using kind of just the remnants on my brush. I'm not really picking up any more paint at the moment. Um, I am going to be adding a little bit more lightness to these to these um, leaves that are nearest to the, the sun in just a minute here. But right now I'm just kind of getting more information here. If you want there to be an illusion of like a branch or something, you can always, or a tree trunk, you can always just use the corner of your um, brush and give yourself some little, the, the appearance of maybe a couple of little branches coming out and then you can just kind of dot the edges of them and that's going to make it look like you've got some tree trunks that are just emerging from the from the woods or the forest and you know you can have little you could even do tall skinny ones that are going to resemble pine trees so if you wanted if you wanted to have a little bit of a of a pine tree kind of coming out in this direction you can really just have fun with the the style of trees that you want to have on there and then once you've got everything kind of in place then I start playing a little bit with the um, with the intensity of those colors with giving them a little bit of that sunshine glowing on them so I without washing my brush I just picked up a little bit of yellow paint and I'm going to start to tap it onto the side where the sun is located I picked up a tiny bit of white paint too over um, as I'm nearing the sun itself I want that these areas to be a bit brighter so you can use a little bit more yellow and white on your brush as you're nearing the actual sun itself and then when you're a little bit farther away from the sun you can you can probably just get away with a little bit of the um, yellow as that highlight color or maybe just yellow and green or something that's just going to provide you with a little bit of highlight over on the side that the um, that the sun is hitting but you don't really need it to be too dramatic if you want there to look like there's a little bit of a bush down at the bottom of your um, where it kind of meets the land you can just kind of add a little bit of a, of a highlight in through there. That always adds a bunch of um, dimension to it. And then you can you know, continue to add as much as you want. Have fun with how you've got your, your tree formations. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful background area all nice and painted, you can wash and dry this large brush. <laughs> it, the tweaking stage is always the stage that I want to sit and do the longest. <laughs> so, but once, once you're all set, you can move on to the next step with your large brush. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our main water area. I'm gonna use my large brush and I am going to be using every color on my palette because <laughs> I've got, I'm gonna be using my blue, black, brown, green, yellow, white, and probably my orange too, yeah. So uh, what we're doing in essence is we're doing the reflection of this land the reflection of the water and then we're also going to we're incorporating like the shine on the top of the water or the um the glossy glassy part of the top of the water which will land right where that horizon line is so when i'm doing this i am never going to use a lot of paint just like when i was doing the sun how i just very I had a very little bit of paint on my brush but i am doing in some instances a large area of um of the canvas so I do have need to have enough to kind of get that paint on there but I don't need so much paint that I'm going to be covering up all of my water this is just meant to be a reflection and 
this water can be ripply because we got people fishing on it. So, and it's the morning, so maybe there's some morning wind that's blowing our, our water and it's a little bit ripply. So we don't need a ton of paint is kind of the, the moral to my story. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm in essence gonna be watching everything that happened in my land with different heights and stuff and different colors. And I'm going to be emulating a very loose interpretation of that in the water as well as my sun. I do want to keep a lot of this glow from the sky in through here because it's going to add a nice mood to the painting. So you don't necessarily want to bring your reflections all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to bring my reflections down maybe a quarter of the way on this side or I would say maybe a third of the way from here to here. So maybe to here and then in this area it might come down about halfway. So I'm going to start with black brown and green on my brush because I know that's the colors that started my um, land and I am just going to be using a really gentle left to right kind of brush stroke and when I and you can start on the right or on the left whatever wherever you're most comfortable but I'm going to do the part that's closest to my land first because I know that they're all kind of the same you know I've got a common type height in that in that center region and you can see you can still see some of my watercolor underneath there I'm not using a lot of paint so this way it dries quickly for me as I get over towards this right side I'm using more green in my on my brush so it emulates what's happening up top a little bit better and I'm just kind of scooting left to right not a lot of paint on my brush now that I've got that you know two inch band that represents the lowest portion of that land. Now I'm going to start adding my little bits of detail uh, that come down further. So this is going to be a little bit higher in through here. This is going to be my highest area on this side. So I'm just going to bring this down in through here. And again, I'm just kind of using this little left to right skirting motion. This is all pretty low lying um, uh, trees in through here but I do have a little bit of yellow I'm seeing in through here I will put my Sun on in a minute but I want to make sure that I've got these treetops represented first before I, I'm gonna have to wash my brush to get to that to get to that and then this is still kind of right around the same height a little bit a little bit higher maybe and then I've got this little one in through here so just going left to right, I don't, again, I don't need anything that's a mirror image of what's happening on top. I'm just looking for a gentle kind of representation. Um, again, if you wanted to, you could certainly add little bits of, you know, your branches or your, or those um, tree trunk. If you wanted that to look a little bit more natural, you could certainly do that. Get this to pop out just a little bit at the top to make it look similar to that one. And then I've got this little guy here. He's shorter than that one. So this reflection is going to be a little bit shorter. And again, you don't need to do it as, you know, as a mirror image. But if you can get similar heights and things of that nature, that will make it look the most natural. And I've got this tree. This is the tallest one of them all. So I need to make sure that it comes down the farthest in that reflection. So something like this will work. And again, I'm just kind of using the corner of my brush to or the, um, the side of my brush to give myself a nice just left to right type of um, ripple motion. Now that I've got that on there, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. Actually, I'm gonna, wa I'm gonna wash my brush because I wanna get that sun in there. We do have the, the glossiness on the top of the water to go, but I wanna get my sun in there first. So I just washed my brush. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint. Gonna go directly below here. Put my, put my white on in through here, and this can trail off a little bit. This is just the reflection, so it doesn't have to, again, be a mirror image. I just put a little bit of that yellow on there, and I just wanna make sure that I'm representing these colors down in the water. Now I'm picking up a tiny bit of that orange, so I see a lot of that orange over here on the left, so making sure that I've got that in the water. And then once I've got that done, then I'm going to wash and dry my brush again and I'm putting like a blue type color, blue and white, or you could just use white. This to me represents a 
I guess in the more early morning, it could be like the little bit of fog that's lifting off of the water. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of blue and white on my brush. You might actually, once you do this, if, if you ended up putting too much paint, which happens a lot, um, pick up a tiny bit of water on your brush and you can um, get it to blend in a little bit more. So right now I have blue and white on my brush. I'm looking to do this at the top of my um, where my water meets my land and I'm just really going lightly back and forth left to right but I'm just scooting it up at the top and now that it's there I'm picking up a tiny bit more blue on my brush to get it to in essence kind of blend in not a hundred percent but work its way into that reflection a little bit. So it's kind of overlap the reflection a little bit to indicate that, again, maybe it's that morning fog lifting off of the water or the glow that is um, at the top of the, of the water itself. And then again, you can keep tweaking this as much as you want to. You can add little tiny, even more um, white, whiter, little sparkly areas if you wanted to. Totally up to you, wherever your visual preference is. That's looking pretty good to me. I might have to step a little bit, get my head a little bit farther away from the canvas so I can see it all the way. But once you've got it on there, and of course you could certainly, if you wanted to, for visual preference again, if you wanted to bring some of that blue light light blue kind of haze over all of the water you're more than welcome to it again this is you know wherever your brain is telling you is the right frequency for your water you can certainly do that and then we're going to be using this large brush again for the next step so once you've got your water nice and glistening with its morning glow you can wash and dry the large brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the base coat for our, I'm gonna call it our marshy island. <laughs> I don't know what the be a better name for it is. It's just a little area of grassy, marshy stuff that's sticking up out of this lake, probably close to the shoreline. So I'm gonna use my large brush and I'm gonna be using black and brown paint. And really I'm just kind of putting it in place with a little bit of um, its initial reflection um, we'll be putting all of the details on it later. So a little bit of black and brown on my large brush. I'm going maybe about an inch, inch and a half away from my um, line that meets the land. And I'm gonna make myself a really kind of messy, I'm skirting my brush left to right right now. I don't want it to be totally straight. So I just gave it a little bit of a curve. It's coming out to about here. Once I've got that line on there, I'm gonna take my brush and I am just pulling it up in these short little um, uh, almost vertical lines, but they don't have to be totally straight. I don't wanna bring them all the way up to my land. I'm just bringing them up from the base of this um, island. And then once I've got that started, and they can be different heights. Different heights is gonna make it look most, most natural. Then without washing my brush, I'm going to come just a tiny bit away from the, um, the bottom of it. And this is gonna start the reflection with the, with the black and the brown on my brush. And I'm just going left to right and trying to keep it in a pretty similar shape as what's happening up above. And I'm not doing much, just kind of giving it a little tiny reflection in through here. And then we are gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this on here, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer to our boat. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using just black paint. So I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and then we're just gonna connect them and we're gonna have a silhouette of sorts for our boat. So I want this to just look like a long, skinny, kind of rowboat type um, vessel, reminiscent of the one that I used to ride in with my dad when we were fishing when I was a little girl. So this is kind of similar to that. So I'm gonna do this, it's gonna just be long and skinny. So on the left-hand side of my canvas, I'm gonna make myself two dots. 
my first dot is going to be right about here. So this is maybe, I would say about three and a half, four inches in from the left and maybe about two, two and a half inches from my land area or about an inch below this little island. And then I'm going to come down from that maybe about an inch and a half, make myself another marker somewhere in through there. So then I'm going to come all the way over to, uh, if this is the center of my canvas, I'm going to go about two or three inches to the right of that. And I am a little bit higher than this marker in here. So if you go a little bit higher, maybe by about half of an inch or so, and then come down um, or and, and you're over from the center of your canvas, maybe two or three inches, that's about where I am. And then I'm going to come down maybe about another inch and a half and I'm going to go out to the right just a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. So I've got four markers. These two are above each other. These two are a little bit higher on the canvas and the bottom one kicks out just a little bit. I'm going to connect the top two with a very slight arcing motion that goes down towards the bottom of my canvas. So I'm going to keep my eye on the prize. I, I'm going to start over on the right and I'm going to go to this one, but I'm going to keep my eye on this one the whole time. So I'm going to kind of just slope it down a little bit in through here and then bring it across here. I know I want it to slope up a little bit by the time it gets to this marker here, so I just want to make sure that I've got that in place and that that looks about right to me. So we've got just a real tiny um, slope, nothing, nothing major. And you can even, if you need to level it off a bit, that's totally fine. And if you didn't get much of a slope at all, you can certainly bring your corners on the end up a little bit if you needed to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this dot to here. And then this dot has to connect to here and this to here. So this is really a continual line for these four in through here, but these markers here are where you want to start the real curve um, from the front of the boat to the bottom and from the back of the boat to the bottom of the boat. So I'm going to go and make a little bit of an arc in through here from this top one to here. So just a little bit of an arc to get to that point there and then I'm going to really arc it and almost come back in a straight line, but I'm going to keep it in a, in a similar curve to what I have at the top. But before I get to that, let me go ahead and make this one. So this one, I got a little bit of a curve in through there, meeting my mark down at the bottom. And now these are going to meet. So in essence, the boat kind of sits almost flat in the water in through here. And then right about here is where it kind of is going to start to come out of the water. So something like this would work. And then I'm just going to color it in black like this. And if yours, again, isn't exactly as mine, it's okay. We could, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll make it look like a boat by the time this is all, all said and done with all the little highlights and bits of information that we're going to put in it. And then once you've got this step accomplished, we will be utilizing this same brush for the next step but you're gonna to have to wash it and dry it in preparation. So once you've got this done, and again, if you feel like you need to bring your corners up or anything along that line, then feel free to, to make any little modifications that you need to. And then we'll use this brush for, just get them all done here for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing this little marshy island area. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, um, orange, yellow, and white, and green. I guess no blue, definitely no blue. Might Maybe a little bit of black, but if I use it, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start with brown and green on my brush. And really what I'm doing is I'm just trying to give myself the um, makings of this, the, the height that I want for these little grassy pieces that are coming. So I'm going to put them all the way towards the bottom of the, um, of the front of this marshy land. And I'm bringing some of them all the way and crossing over into my, my upper land. So this way... 
I have some good dimension. I'm able to see through them, but I'm not using the darkest color on my palette because I want to make sure that they definitely are able to have some dimension to them. So just brown and green is where I started. Now what I want to do, I know that I want this left hand area to be a little bit darker than the right hand area, but I need to, I want to add some kind of a, like a rusty type color to the grass, like it's almost dead, I guess, not really dead grass, but, but definitely having a rusty kind of look to it. So I'm going to make myself a little bit of a, a tan kind of color. So orange, yellow, and brown is going to give me this oh, like a peachy tan type of color that will look great on top of the the lighter color that we just did almost think of it like hay kind of like a hay color and then once I've got that I'm going to utilize little pieces of that throughout here so it's going to give it a lot of dimension I'm not going to push hard with my brush I'm just really giving maybe a little bit more of that peach color so or the um, orange color so it looks a little bit more um, having a little bit more of the orange in there so I just added a bit more of the orange and now I'm getting more of like a hay type color and I'm just giving this more down towards the bottom of this um, area and then once I've got that on there I'm gonna start adding some light pieces at the top some more of almost like a light green kind of color so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna utilize my green yellow and white and I'm making myself like a light kind of lime green color and this is going to add some beautiful little tips to the top which will make them look a little bit more alive so I have a bit of a lime green kind of color on my brush and I'm really just doing this more towards the top of this um, of this area so that way it looks like it's almost a different type of um, foliage up at the tippy tops of it and I'm bringing it a little bit into the land itself and I'm trying not to keep it too systematic maybe giving myself some little messy edges here and there I again want to keep this back area a little bit darker um, and now I think I'm going to use a little bit of uh, maybe some of my sunrise colors so I'm going to use some orange yellow and white and give myself a really light kind of a peachy color you could use these all on your brush at the same time I'm just looking for some kind of light glow on the edge of these front pieces of grass so I've got a lot of white peach or uh, orange and yellow on my brush right now to give myself these very pretty little highlights from that morning glow maybe a little bit more white or light color on my brush to give myself some of uh, the pretty tips of these um, of these pieces of grass just being highlighted by the morning glow and of course you can sprinkle this in through these areas in through here just giving yourself little individual pieces of grass they can be leaning over think of these more like um, I don't know like the grass on pussy willows where they're like light and airy up at the top and then I'm going to have to do a little bit of a reflection I just added a bit more white to my brush a little bit of a reflection down in the water below just to make sure that this um, reads as the reflection of what's going on up top so I just want to make sure first I've got enough of what I want I'm really just kind of dabbing my brush along the way to make sure that I've got some of these colors just represented the way that I want and make sure that I've got enough dimension in here you can kind of keep playing with it and tweaking it until you've got as many little pieces of grass just kind of sticking up in through here and then once I've got it the way that I want then I'm just going to kind of utilize those colors down in the reflection so I've got my my green and my brown and you can certainly pull it down in a messy fashion if you want to you can go left to right like we were doing the whole time for the rest of the reflection um, oh, and again if you've got some longer pieces you could certainly bring those up as well I've got my yellow 
kind of combination that I had in this front, so I definitely want to make sure that there's a little bit of that reflecting in the water below it. I got a little bright piece here, so I'll pull that down into the reflection, maybe back here. If I've got some orange or that rusty color that we used initially, I can put a little bit of that in the reflection. So again, the reflection is meant to reflect what's above it. So if you've got a lot of the light color in through here, put it there. If you've got some white in through here, you can put that in, in your water and that's going to make it look like it's reflecting whatever is above it. And then we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your marshy land finished, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first coat of our people. So I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm using just black paint. So I'm going to have mine represent a maybe a dad and a daughter just because, you know, that's close to my own heart. You can certainly make yours a mom and a son or two brothers or two sisters or two friends or whoever you'd like to represent. Um, if I'm doing a a young child, not a baby, but maybe like a seven or eight year old. So I'm going to have the young person is going to be, the height is going to be about halfway between my boat and my um, water line. And my adult person is going to be almost as tall, just shy of that water line. So if you're doing an adult and a child, you can you know, use yours accordingly. So I'm just using black paint. I'm gonna make a little small circle for the head. I've got my um, child's head in through here. I'm gonna make myself a circle-ish that's maybe about a half of an inch wide by a half of an inch tall, somewhere in through there. And we're just doing representational people. <laughs> we're not doing photographic people. So I'm just gonna give us some basic shapes and we'll, um, have them look like they're in kind of the silhouette anyway. So now that I've got the head on there, I'm going to just put a torso, which is going to be a little bit wider than the head. And I'm just going to kind of bring it down right to the boat and do the same thing on the left hand side. Maybe the left hand side pokes out a little bit more because maybe it's the back of the, of the child, something like that. And then just bring it right down to the boat. I'm going to have mine look like a, represent a young girl. So she's going to have a ponytail on her head. So I'm going to go ahead and put a ponytail just kind of come in off the back of the head. And you can have yours if you're going to do a ponytail as well. It could certainly be as long or as short as you want. This is just a good um, identifying mark if you want it to look like a little girl. And then I'm going to put maybe a little bump on the top of the front of the head to look like there's some little bangs maybe uh, in through in through that region. And then I don't even need to have her hand because I think I'm going to have the fishing pole is going to be down. Um, you know, she's she's at a good angle where we don't need any hands. So I'm going to go ahead and do the adult person. So I'm going to have this one about half the distance between her and the end of my boat somewhere in through here or just a little bit past my marshy area. The top of the head is really close to the edge of the um, water line. And I'm going to have this one more of like a, I mean, it's a circle, but it might be closer to an oval. I think it's a little bit, I've got mine a little bit taller than it is wide. So that's where I'm just kind of starting this. And mine is representing the person with a hat on. So you can certainly um, make yours, if you're not going to have a hat on, you could make yours maybe a little bit smaller, but mine's going to represent um somebody with a hat on and then the shoulders it's a cold morning this person's wearing a nice warm coat i think so i'm gonna have the shoulders right up to the head somewhere in through this vicinity and the shoulders are not much wider than the head just a little bit we're looking at this person kind of from an angle and i'm keeping this shape pretty simple so once i've got those shoulders on there i'm really just bringing this basic shape which is a long kind of 
oval rectangle type shape down to the boat to the boat I'm just using black paint and once I've got this shape on here I'll show you how you can modify it to make it look like something other than a basic shape so if I want there to be maybe us to see the elbow the back elbow of this left arm I'm gonna um, come out on this left hand shoulder and I'm gonna just kick it out a little bit in through here to till it's about halfway down that shape and then I just bring it back in towards the body something like this and that's gonna give the illusion that this is the back of the arm that's the elbow in through there and then on the right hand side maybe I've got an, a little bit of the elbow on the right hand side so I'm going to come directly over from this left one and do something similar maybe not exactly the same but maybe something a little bit similar and maybe this one doesn't come out as far because maybe we're just seeing the little edge of it or something so something like that and then we're gonna have the fishing pole coming out through there I want this person to have a hat on. So you could do like a baseball hat or a little fishing hat, whatever you feel is a good kind of rim to the hat. I'm gonna have my hat like a little bit of a fishing hat. So it's gonna be pretty far down the um, the back of the head anyway. So something like this, the little fishing hat with a, with a little rim around the edge. And then it comes out the front just a little bit. So again, you can have your hats be if you're gonna have one with a hat on it, you can have it whatever way you like. And then we are gonna be using our medium brush for the, or our large brush, sorry, our large brush, brush for the next step. So you can put your small one away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our sunbeams. So I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna be using white, mostly white paint. I'll use a tiny bit of yellow and I'll also use a little bit of water too. So your sunbeams can be as bright and as vibrant and as long as you'd like them to be. I'm going to have mine um, obviously coming out of my sun, but I'm not going to have them going all the way across my canvas. I'll just have them kind of bursting out of here. And if I feel that it would behoove me, I'll put some little sparkles in my water too. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my large brush I'm gonna, I'm dabbing it in my water and then I'm just kind of dabbing it in my white paint. So I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and it is watered down because I picked up some water first and I'm wiping it on the side of my palette. So that's gonna ensure that I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, but if you feel that your brush is overloaded, you can just kind of dab it on your paper towel. You'll start in the center of your sun and all of your beams should come out of the center. So I'm just gonna kind of pull this paint out in this direction. And you could certainly have more than I have. You could have less than I have. You can pull it right in front of your land like this, like it's peeking right through. You can have it going all the way off your canvas. Feel free to make as much as you want, as many as you want. Once you've got kind of the, I have a little hair or something on there. Once you've got them as far as you want and you can just kind of keep pulling them. My, my brush is getting dry as we speak, which is allowing me to kind of push a little bit harder and get them to pull out in a little bit more of a translucent kind of way. And then once I've got as many as I want, I can add a touch of yellow as well. But I caution you because the yellow can really be overpowering. So if you do want a touch of yellow, take a teeny tiny bit on your brush and use a little bit of that white paint as well and dab it on your paper towel. You can see on my paper towel how vibrant that is. And then you can, if you want to, you can just kind of pull out a little bit in those rays. I wouldn't go overboard with the yellow just to add, you know, it just helps to add that bit of, a, of the sunshine glow into the rays if you want them. And then if you feel that um, you want, I, I want a little bit more yellow in my, in my ones across here, hold on. Um, if you feel that you want to add a bit in the water coming out of this sun in through here, you can certainly add a tiny bit of the white 
onto your brush and you can certainly just pull it out a little bit. It's totally up to you. I wouldn't go crazy with the reflection in the water, but if you wanted to, you could certainly, certainly incorporate that in through there. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We are actually gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your sunbeams all nice and shining and as bright as you want them to be, you can wash and dry your small brush or just get your small brush ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for my next step is I'm painting my fishing poles and the lines. I'm gonna use my uh, small brush. I'm going to be using mostly black to get them in place and then I'll use a little bit of white to do some highlights and maybe some colors to uh, do my ripple in the water. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to be utilizing watered down black paint so it's nice and smooth and can give me a nice slender line. So all I'm doing is I'm adding a couple of drops of water into my black paint so it is kind of like an ink consistency so that way when I go to do these lines I will have nice control and hopefully I'll get them as slender as I want and if you don't get them as slender as you want you can totally um, when you're done when we put, we'll put a little highlight on them and that will make them look a little bit more slender and then what I do is I take my brush and I spin it around and around on the side of my palette. That makes my brush nice and pointy. So that, that's another tip to have a nice skinny line. And the, best, the biggest tip I can give you to have a nice skinny line is don't push hard. <laughs> that's one of the, the tips that we all seem to forget as we're doing these, um, these skinny lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my pole. And for my adult, I'm gonna have it coming out from this area in through here. And I'm going to have it traveling over my little person and I'm going to have mine coming to, I would say, about here. So they can have a little bit of a bend to them or they can be totally straight. I suppose if there was a fish on the line, it would be a little bit um, um, bent, but you can certainly have yours bending or have it straight, whatever works for you, but it's pretty darn long. So I've got that going on in through there. Once I've got it on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little, make it a little bit wider at the base, especially on the adult person. So that way, because it seems like we're seeing more of this person's, I'm gonna put the little um, fishing reel part in through here. And then I will put my fishing line on. So the line, if you can get a skinny enough um, mark with your with your paintbrush you can have a really just a narrow line you'll see it when it comes into this air area in through here narrow line coming right next to the fishing pole something like this and then i'm gonna go ahead and put the line going into the water so i'm gonna have um this person's fishing string or line landing just in front of the boat somewhere about here I would say so uh, this is going to have more of an arc to it than the pole itself so here we go I'm going to just keep my eye on the prize here's where it's starting and then it's going to kind of just go into I don't feel like I have enough moisture on my brush so I just re-wet it and I'm gonna go down this side in through here. I'm hardly touching my canvas, something like that. And then once I have it on here, I'm gonna give myself a couple of little swirls in the water. So just kind of bringing a little bit of um, a ripple of sorts around the edge of that. I'm gonna do the same thing for her fishing pole and then I'll add a highlight on them in a minute. Um, so for hers, I'm gonna have her fishing pole coming out somewhere right in this vicinity and through here. And it is going to land. I would say I'm gonna go diagonal from this corner, maybe somewhere in through here is where I'm gonna have the end of hers landing. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my dots with hopefully a semi straight line. And if it curves a little bit, that's okay. I need a little more paint on my brush. I'm very cautious when it comes to doing these lines because they tend to um, get away from me sometimes, but that's all right. 
If it does, we can, we can always correct it, right? So that works for me. And I have a shaky hand too, so I, you can't always see it, but I brace myself on the side of my canvas. So the end of her, her fishing line, well, actually, let's put the, um, the line itself on the pole like we did to the adult. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a little bit of a slender line coming on off of the edge of here and sometimes these little these little details you 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 don't necessarily need them all the time but if you want it to be pretty authentic and try and make it look pretty realistic the little details can, can make a difference and then I'm going to have the end of her line kind of landing in the water somewhere in through there so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of an arcing motion to get hers to land somewhere in through here and then just give that little tiny bit of a ripple like she just cast it and it's just a little ripply in the water now and now I'm going to go ahead and put a highlight on it. So I'm going to use um, white paint for my highlight but you could certainly utilize a light yellow or a light orange and my highlight is going to be on the side with the sun. So every time I go to make a mark my head is telling me just keep it on the right hand side and all I'm doing is just making a little tiny bit of a line of sorts on the right hand side of my fishing pole and if you wanted to you could do it of on the right hand side of your line itself the fishing line and then maybe on the right hand side of the um, the reel down below and if you needed to make any tweaks, if you, if, like I feel my fishing pole might be a little bit too narrow, I'm going to actually widen my pole itself up just a little bit because it looks a little narrow for this, for, for the adult here. And then I'll go ahead and put a tiny bit of a highlight on the young person's um, fishing pole itself. And I can see that I had black on my hand, that I just got black on my canvas, which I'll co correct that in a minute. Um, I am going to put a little highlight. I know I said I was going to put one on her fishing pole, but I'm going to do it on the um, string of the adult. So let me just give it a little bit of a line coming down in through here. And it doesn't have to be much. Sometimes it just twinkles in the sun. It doesn't, you don't have to do the whole thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and do her. She's just going to have a little bit of a highlight maybe on the top of her pole. I don't know if hers is in front or behind his, but we'll put it in front for now. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a um, ripple in the water too. So maybe I'll use a little bit of white and blue just to kind of get this ripple to look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then we are going to use the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your fishing poles on here and you've got your ripples in your water, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our people. I'm gonna use my small brush and you can really use any colors you want because we're doing clothing. So clothing can be any color that you want. Um, and we're doing hair, which of course can be blonde or black or brown or red, so whatever color hair you want. And then the skin color, of course, can be any skin color that you want. So I am going to be doing my clothing, at least on the adult with blue paint. Um, the skin, I think I might use some of this like rusty color that we pre-mixed before, and then I will I'm not, I might make her shirt or her sh maybe like the orange color or something. So I'm going to start with some blue paint on my brush and I'm going to put the adult's clothing in place. So for, I know that I have a black base, which is great because it will in essence end up being like a nice dark blue for me. And I just am looking for some little bits of highlights because all of this is kind of in a silhouette type of way because the sun is over there so we're just seeing the back and maybe a little sliver of the front. So I'm going to put some blue on the shoulders in through here. This is going to be the the back of the of the shirt. You can always also re you know make the 
the shirt or the pants or whatever buckle out a little bit more make your person a little bit wider if you wanted to you could bump out the bottom if you wanted to you can have as much fun with it as you'd like I'm gonna just put a little bit of a highlight which means I'm gonna pick up blue and white on my brush to do a little bit of a highlight on the side that the Sun is so I just brought a little bit of white on that side and if this is my elbow it maybe bumps out just a little bit in through there and that's going to give the illusion that we have um, kind of a three-dimensional arm in through here with a with an elbow and then it gets a little bit um, uh, you have a shadow behind it so you can do that and then maybe a little highlight on the front of the um, shirt in through here so I am going to bring my shirt down into my boat about a quarter of an inch like that this is going to set my person inside the boat in a minute we're going to be doing the um, the details on the boat so this is getting we're, we're putting the people in the boat right now because we're going to have an edge to it in a minute. So that's what I'm going to do for the shirt. For the hat, I'm going to use the same colors, maybe some blue and white. And I'm going to have a little edge to my hat coming down the side, something like this. Maybe a little highlight on the front of the hat. And again, I'm not doing much. I'm just kind of leaving a little bit of darkness back in through here. So this looks like it's the back of the, of the hat, making sure that I've got that blue represented pretty well, but keeping a lot of the dark black in through there. And then I will put the, put the face on in a minute, but I just want to make sure that looks pretty good. Maybe a little more highlight on the back in through here just to make sure that there's some there's some shape onto that the back of the shoulders and you can certainly if you feel like you've done something and you're like oh that was too much just bring back some of the black the you know it's a great color to to help correct when you're doing a step like this so this is just all the back and we're just kind of seeing a bit of that elbow in through there so for for the little lady over here i'm going to i think i'm just going to use some of the orange color as my as my shirt color maybe or maybe orange and blue maybe it'll be like a little purple kind of color so i think i'm going to use orange and blue is my my color combination and again i'm just kind of adding a little bit of a highlight over on the side where the sun is so just a little bit of a highlight over in through here and then just kind of blending it into the back of the of the shirt. I want her also to come into the boat. So I'm just bringing this line down in like this. And I guess she might, I don't think she needs an elbow because I'm gonna say her, well, maybe she does. If you feel that she needs an elbow, just put a little, um, a shadow right behind this little, somewhere in this vicinity and that will, that will give you a elbow to her. Um, and if you feel like she's good, then she's good. Her hair, I'm gonna do with, um, let's make her have some brown hair. So I'm just gonna pick up some of my brown and maybe a little bit of white. And I'm just gonna add little bits of highlights into her hair just so it looks like it's maybe catching the morning glow in through here. And she's gonna, it's gonna come all the way down the side because it's going to be pulled up into the ponytail so something like that maybe i've got a couple little pieces down and through here maybe she needs some orange in her hair too now that i'm and now that i'm seeing yeah we, we give them give her a little little morning glow on there and then i'm going to add their skin color to their face so all I'm really looking to do is add a tiny little highlight to the front of their face that's catching the morning glow, just so we have some representation of the, uh, of the actual skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, uh, that rusty color that we made for these shrubs over here, and I'm going to use that as my base coat, and then I'll add a little of maybe yellow and white as a tiny little highlight. So I can use this color and just kind of put the face in shape. Maybe there's a little neck 
that we're seeing. Maybe the ear is somewhere in through there as well. Maybe he's got some dark black hair. Maybe I've got a tiny little nose in through here, which you're hardly going to be able to see this, but it, it's something that will add quite a bit of information to the painting itself. And I'm going to go ahead and just color her whole face in with this color. And now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and maybe a little yellow, but just I'm going to start with white first just to kind of give him a little kind of highlight on his on his nose. And this is just a, you know, less is more kind of step. You don't need much at all. Maybe a little bit on his on his chin in through there. And of course, if you made it, you know, of a size that you don't like, you can certainly tweak it a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and do hers. And these are so tiny of little details. You know, you don't really need much at all to to give a good representation of, you know, the side of the face. So that was just a little white and I'm just kind of pulling it back to make sure that it blends in. And I just need that bit of white in order to, um, for you to actually see the, the, that there is an edge to that face. If I didn't have that bit of white on that edge, you might not even detect the difference between the face and the, um, and the water itself. And then if I wanted to add any more information to her hair, I'm just adding a bit more of those brown kind of colors to give her a little bit more fluff in her hair, I guess, and make sure that you can detect that she's got some pretty, some pretty locks, pretty, you know, young lady locks in through here. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your people all nice and play in place here and you've got all the little tweaks and stuff that you want on them, you can uh, wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our boat. I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, white, and orange. So all my colors except for blue. So how I'm gonna do this is I need to maintain the inside of the boat where my people are. I've gotta put an edge to the boat and I'm gonna have my boat a very natural, earthy, green kind of color, but I want it to obviously be much darker in the back of it and on the bottom and then it's gonna get lighter as it goes towards the front and it's going to look kind of like it's wooden because I've got streaks going left to right. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with my dark paint which is black and I want to make sure that I've got in essence kind of the back end and the bottom fully almost wet with black right now so when I start picking up the brown I can have it um, merge into it. So I've got black on my brush right now. I'm really just kind of wetting my can my bottom of my boat. And if you go into the water a little bit, don't worry. We've got a big reflection that's going to happen in a minute. Now I'm putting brown on my brush to get my back end of my boat to start to emerge as a really dark kind of vessel. In a second, I'm going to start picking up green. And when I pick up green, that's when we'll do the edge, the top edge of the boat. But right now I just have the black remnants with brown on my brush to get this bottom of the boat nice and dark but still on the browner side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm picking up brown and green at the same time and this is where I'm going to give my boat an edge. So the edge of the boat is going to go tip to tip but what's going to happen is I'm going to start here and I'm going to ride this edge just a little bit and then I'll start to bring it pull it away. It's going to go to the bottom of my little girl, to the bottom of my adult, and then back up to this edge in through here. So if you wanted to, the back end uh, you can see inside the boat and the front end you can't is kind of how I have it playing out. So what I'm going to do, you can start at either end, but I'm going to start here and give myself a little bit of a separation here and then it, then I'll also go here. So now I have my starting and my ending point so I can um, not get lost. So I'm gonna ride this edge just a little bit, maybe I would say an inch, inch and a half, and then start pulling it away. 
Again, green and brown is what I have on my brush right now. And now this is going to meet this other area in through here. So I'm just gonna kind of give myself that tiny bit of a curve and then just meet this marker in through here. So that has given me the outside edge of my boat. Now I'm picking up some more green to get this color on here. I want my um, front of my boat to be the lightest, but I don't wanna start picking up my white yet. I really am just kind of looking to get this base coat with the dark earthy green and brown on here right now. And then I'll go do that back edge and then we'll add a nice highlight onto the front here. So right now, just kind of using this green, giving myself some nice um, directional brush strokes in the direction I feel that the wood would be, the wood grain would go, so something like that. Then I'm gonna utilize my green paint to just give myself a little bit of an edge over on the back side of the boat. So this is where I'm going to uh, just go along the edge and skip my people. So I'm not pushing hard. I'm just giving myself a little tiny skinny edge over and through there. And now that I have that on there, I'm gonna start loading my brush with orange, yellow, and white. I'm not washing my brush orange, yellow, and a little bit of white. My highlight is coming at the end of my boat and the top edge of my boat. So I've got yellow, orange, and white on my boat, on my boat, on my boat and on my brush. <laughs> and I wanna just give myself a little bit of an edge and I'm also gonna give myself a nice bright edge in the front. So I got quite a bit of white paint on my brush right now. Just slowing down for a second here so I can get this edge the way that I want it. And then once I've got that lighter color on there, I just start pulling it back in the direction of the curve of the boat, like this. I'm gonna put a little bit more orange on my brush just so it looks like it's um, giving some, getting some glow from the, from the morning sun. And I'm just kind of pulling this back in through here. I do remember, I'm, I'm looking at these, these people that I just painted and they really, I just remember the, the early morning fishing when you know the day is gonna be all nice and warm once that sun goes up over the, the trees, but right now it's really still cold. <laughs> so I'm like shivering watching them right now because I'm thinking, oh my God, it's just the coldest time when you first get out there and you're like, you're casting the first, the first, um, the first cast and it's still so cold out there, but they'll warm up. You'll warm up, I promise, as soon as that sun goes above those trees. Um, so I'm just putting a little extra bit of highlight over on the edge of the bow. I just picked up, again, a little bit more orange, yellow, and white, and now I'm gonna add some real pretty um, highlight colors on this edge in through here, maybe a touch more orange. And then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your boat all nice and painted and you've got enough highlight on it and you're feeling good about it, you can wash and dry. Just add in a bit more here. I might add a bit more in the front portion, but I think it's looking pretty good at the moment. And I'm gonna wash and dry this medium brush. Okay, ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're making the shadow and the reflection of the boat. So, and any ripples you want around it too. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm using all of the colors that I've used for my boat and my people. So I'm using all of the colors on my palette. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm working from dark to light. So I'm gonna start with my shadows and my dark areas for my reflection. Now, keep in mind, you don't have far to go on to hit the bottom of your canvas. So I am making my reflection kind of almost on a one-to-one -one basis based on how much room I have. You could certainly make your reflections longer or shorter. You can skew them within the water if you wanted to. But for me, based on how much distance I have below my um, boat, I'm only gonna bring my reflection of my boat the, this side is gonna be about the same height as that itself. So it'll be like a one-to-one -one ratio, just so I have enough room to kind of give you all the information I want. 
So I'm starting with black paint on my brush. I need a shadow underneath the front part of this boat. So I've got black on my brush and I, I'm bringing this out in a horizontal line in messy, like it's um, rippling in the water. So I'm just using the tip of my brush. This is gonna give the illusion that the boat is coming right out of the water. And I'm bringing it out just a little bit farther than the end of the boat, something like that. So that's all I'm gonna do for the for the shadow, making sure that the whole boat is inside the water in through here. And then what I'm gonna do, I know that the darkest end of my boat is in the rear end over here. So I'm just gonna kind of reload my brush with black and brown because I know that there's brown in the, in the rear end of this boat. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna, for me, I'm gonna continue to use a left to right brush stroke to get the illusion of the ripples. Um, you could certainly use um, an up and down motion. A lot of, some people like to do their reflections in a vertical sense. I like to do mine in horizontal. But as I'm doing this, I'm watching the edge of my boat. So it kind of lifts off a little bit in through here. So I'm gonna lift off a little bit and then I'm gonna curve it back in. I know that I need to only go to this distance, so I just am gonna make sure that I kind of have um, given myself that marker so I don't go too far past it. And then as I get in through this vicinity in through here, I'm gonna start picking up some brown and green to get the, the colors to, to work their way into the water because they are on that boat and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this green all the way over. I'm just kind of watching what's happening in my boat itself. And again, I'm just using a left to right kind of brush stroke. I do wanna be mindful of what's gonna happen as I reach the front of the boat. So I just gotta kind of be cautious and, and know what I'm, where I'm headed. So I'm headed towards the lighter colors in through the front. So I'm gonna start picking up orange, yellow, and white, and this is gonna to start to make this tip of the of the boat, so something like this. And this is probably gonna go pretty close to the bottom of my canvas, so something like that. And I want all of these to look like, you know, they belong to the same, to the same vessel, so I'm gonna keep loading my brush as I'm seeing those colors. And again, you could do it curved to look like a, um, a mirror image. I am just looking to make my water look a little bit on the rippled side. I think I need a little bit more darkness at the bottom of the boat right in through here, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my green, brown, and black just to make sure I've got the bottom of the boat represented on that front, on this front little edge here that will help to sell the story of this being a reflection. And then I've got my little people that I wanna make sure I get as well as this highlight on the side of the boat. So if you feel at any time your brush is overloaded with colors, just wash and dry it. I just washed and dried mine and picked up some yellow, orange, and white so I can get this edge of the boat represented in my reflection. So this is gonna work in through here. And then I'll probably use a little bit more white as I go towards that front of the boat. Again, I wanna make sure that this reads as the same reflection of the same thing. So just making sure I've got that bright enough in through there and that looks pretty good to me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my little people and I don't have much to do for my little people, so I'm gonna start with just a little bit of black. I'm gonna just go directly below this person in through here, and I'm gonna give it a left to right um, gentle wiggle mark all the way down to the end of my canvas because I know that I, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here, just keeping it pretty much in the same width that I have for him or for that person. And if you feel that you can see part of the color of the clothing, I just put a little bit of blue on my brush just to, again, keep the authenticity of what it is, in fact, reflecting. I'm gonna do the same thing for her. She is gonna, I'm gonna start hers with black, just go directly below, make a mark about the same width as that particular object. And then I'm just gonna kind of go left to right I don't, let's see, if she's this tall, I don't think I'd even see her head on here. Maybe just a little, maybe we'll get the little bit of her ponytail um, 
uh, in the reflection. Maybe I can move this like this so you can see it a little bit better so my hand doesn't get in the way. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of go like this and then maybe we're going to see her a little bit of a ponytail. Yeah, that looks cute. And then I'll put a bit of the um, purpley color that I used with that um, orange and blue that I created for her for her shirt. So just kind of put a little bit of that in there. And then we have, oh, and, and maybe a little highlight too. If you've got a little, I see a little highlight on her arm, I can bring a little, a little lightness into that reflection. And if I needed to, I could put the, um, the fishing pole too. If you felt like you could see a bit of the fishing pole, that'd be cool. If you had um, the wherewithal to just kind of do a little tiny line in the water, you can certainly do that. And then we have one little step to go. It's going to be with our tiny, um, our smallest paintbrush. So once you've got your beautiful reflection in your water, you can wash and dry your small brush. Now's the time I'm going to sit here and want to tweak again forever. <laughs> you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I'm going to sign this one in the bottom left corner. I sign mine with my initials. But you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a special mark, whatever you'd like. It's your painting. You sign it whatever way you'd like to. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful lake fishing image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.